All right, so let's call the meeting to order. And it appears that uh, uh, Elizabeth, Mark, uh, Mike uh, is here, Jim is here, and Fran is here. And Fran, do you realize that you're muted on mine? Okay. All right. So we did a roll call. And the first thing on the agenda uh, is the approval of the minutes from September. Is there any discussion regarding the minutes in September? No. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I think Mike or Jim should, since I wrote them. <laughs> Okay. Sure, I'll make a motion. Thank you, no, Mike. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, any discussion? Uh, can we have a vote and see I'm how just going to abstain because I wasn't here. I have no idea. I'm, okay. I'm just going to say you're accurate, but I'm just not going to vote. Okay. So we uh, uh, are all in favor. Say aye. 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 Great. Sounds like uh, there were uh, four. Uh, Francis, and uh, so uh, any discussion about it? And so moved. Uh, next on the agenda, my uh, is uh, citizens' petitions and comments. Does anybody have any any questions? Any uh, concerns? Okay, I'm not sure how people in my neighborhood, Mark, have found out that I'm on the commission. Okay. But, but several have. Okay. Uh, and, and what they're wondering is uh, why the golf course seems to be doing so good, and I never share anything with anybody, um, especially during COVID, and yet the green fence on on Eastern Point Road is literally falling down. And um, what can we do as a commission to get it repaired? And you, I think they've tried to repair it, but to get it replaced, I guess that's the question. Sure. So we had put money into uh, a CIP to fix both that fence and then the fix the fence that goes underneath the road. Yeah. Um, and we didn't put enough money in. Uh, the bids came in higher than what we had uh, budgeted. So we only had money enough to do the fence that goes underneath the road. So what will have to happen is um, as we're putting together the CIPs for next fiscal year, We'll have to put that project back in uh, and put more money in the proposed CIP budget to pay for the repairs or the replacement of that fence. I, I was just curious. Uh, I probably have asked this in on previous uh, uh, times when we've met. If the golf course is doing so good and making oodles of money, how is it that you can't use any of that money to repair that fence? So uh, you're correct. We are, the golf course is, is doing very well and it's making money, but we still have to live within the budget that is passed by the council. So despite the fact that we have, um, we've made more revenue than we projected, we still can't spend that money um as if it hasn't been approved by the council so we have to live within the budget that was approved by the council okay hey uh mark um i just wanted to to make um one observation um on the cost of the golf club and and it does make a little bit over 1.5 million dollars i looked at the financial statements last year and I think the issue with the golf course is, you know, there's only four groundskeepers, as I recall, then there's a mechanic, 
And then there's Todd, who's the PGA pro, and Eric, who's the groundskeeper. And then the part-time uh, individuals that work in the clubhouse to collect the money and do the scheduling, that kind of thing. The right. And I see, yeah, go ahead. And, and, I'm sorry. And then there, there's Rangers also. So there's the pro shop yeah. staff yeah. and then yeah. the Rangers to try to, you know, manage play on the golf course, pace of play yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I, what I saw was, I, I don't think that's an excessive number of employees for a you know, facility that size and for the amount of revenue that's taken in, but compared to other golf courses, the the pay package I think is reasonable. The benefits package, because I think their union employees, is very high. the The fringe benefits for those six full time employees is quite high, and so I think that's where most of the revenue goes to is to pay those six or seven full time employees with a municipal benefits package. Okay. I'm not sure all golf courses have that, but I think we're required to do that because they are town employees. So um, that's a substantial amount of the, the budget of, of Shenacosta, which I think most golf clubs don't have. You know, they probably have uh, more part-time employees doing groundskeeping, that kind of thing, but, but ours are all full-time under the collective bargaining agreement. So people think that's that, you know, a million and a half is a lot of money, but because it's a, you know, a municipal golf course staffed by municipal employees, it's quite expensive to run. So that's that's correct. I don't know the exact percentage, but I, I'm guessing that seventy percent of the budget uh, goes towards covering expenses for personnel. Yeah, and then and the, the other. I look, at, I look at the fringe benefits of the of the employees, it's almost equal to the salary because I think the medical is quite high for Groton municipal employees and uh, Shinnecasa gets a share of that, yeah. Yeah, we're on all on a high deductible health plan. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's very Correct. expensive they're in all, Connecticut. Yeah, very expensive. Yeah, they're, they're all union employees. So, um, you know, their wages are negotiated through the collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a kind of a lot of, you know, you wouldn't call it fixed costs, but there's a lot of costs associated with the staffing of a of the uh the golf club. So I, I yes. think when people ask me, that's what I say. You know, you don't understand the, you know, the way um uh it's staffed and the requirements as a municipal course. So right. Well, and, and you're you're correct that most well um Shenacos, it's open year round. And um, so the employees work year round versus uh, uh, other courses. I think, you know, they are employed during the playing season, maybe a few weeks before, a few weeks after, just yeah. for start up and wrap up. But there's a period of time where, you know, the personnel expenses are significantly lower. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah. There, There is one significant thing that uh, stands out in my mind, Jim, and I don't know if you recall this. Uh, there was one person, one, that came to a meeting and complained about four trees. Now, taking down those trees was not in the budget. But somehow, those trees were taken down. Mm -hmm. And yet, when we look at a fence that people drive by, and I'm telling you, hundreds, probably a thousand people per week go by it who go to and from Yukon. And yet, we can't find the money to fix the fence. I get what you're saying about the employees, but yet for the trees that wasn't budgeted either so yeah. uh, i don't disagree with you yeah yeah okay so we've lived yeah. with the fence for numerous years yeah and yet one complaint from one person i don't know how it took place so quickly 
but it did. And yeah. that's all I'm going to say about the subject. Yeah. yeah, I know those fences. They're on the tee box of 18 and a tee box of 12. And yep. it doesn't look good. Yeah, I always look at it myself when I when I pass yep. it. They're bent up. It, it should be replaced. Yeah. But, you know, since we're on that subject also, Mark, you know, if you look at, I, I don't really know how they prioritize their smaller projects at the golf course. But if you look at the little makeshift bridge between hole eight and nine, if you're familiar with that. Yes. Kind of a piece of plywood and a little wooden step bridge that's falling apart when there is a pathway that's paved around between eight and nine. I'm sure there's a history there. I just don't know it, but it's unsightly. And I've never seen anything like it. It it should be removed because it never looks good. No one needs to be there because there's a there's a walkway around it. I think it was a shortcut that that was put in there. And it's not much of a shortcut. And I, I was always thinking that maybe even if we take the, the little bridge down people will still walk through that area and and muck it up the, the way to fix that is just to put a sign or a, a little rope there but i know eric doesn't like to put little stakes and ropes i don't know why but that's what i had heard um that should be removed because it's have you seen it lately i have not seen it lately but i know it is in disrepair and i had talked to eric and he had talked about just removing it but fully expected um members to complain about the fact that they now had to walk around and couldn't go over the bridge so hey you know really yeah. it's kind of yeah. it's kind of like i guess i'll just the dom's issue you know some things are like <laughs> obvious and you know you get confused sometimes yeah. what their thought process is on these two my observation with with the the the, the front office there is they like to make everybody happy and they do whatever anybody says uh, because they're always trying to bring in revenue because their cost base is so high. So there tends not to be a lot of rules there and people get what they want and they shouldn't always get what they want because it's not necessarily good for the golf course. Okay. Um, anyway, that's yeah. my two cents on that. Yeah, Jim, so I'll have to disagree with you there. I agree that the the, the, the bridge is kind of really ghetto, probably does need a replacement. I, I, mean, I think if you look at the number of people that use it, in my opinion, it warrants building like, uh, Mark, you know how in the disc golf course you built there, bridges built by like two by sixes and uh, decking material across, um, yep. probably wouldn't be more than, you know, a couple hundred dollars to build something like that there. In my opinion, that's the type of uh, aesthetic and um, safe, to be honest, because that, that board is kind of really, really ghetto. Um, in my opinion, that that's the type of thing that should be put there. And um, it, it's not a high cost item uh, to right. do. Right. Um, I would like to go back to the trees and the fence um, and just provide the rest of the story on the trees. So uh, Don is correct. One person complained about the trees. Uh, he felt that they were unsafe. We brought an arborist in who was an expert in trees. And he confirmed that all of the trees were unsafe. So now that we were aware that the trees were unsafe, it put us in a position where the trees had to be removed. So that's why the trees were removed immediately for safety of the players. So that's the rest of the tree story. Okay. And and I burned probably three quarter of that of that bad wood to just, to, <laughs> just just to let you know the the end of the story. But anyway, okay. like, we probably should move on. But yes, I do remember that, Mark. Um, moving right along, citizens. Um, one question, Mark. So, um, sure. can, for golf course, can we next time you do the revenue report? Uh, you know, I know how you, you include stats every every month of the cost, you know, and uh, of the revenue of the golf course, and it gives you at the bottom the you know the equivalent um, year to date revenue. You know, it would be really interesting maybe in, in one of the meetings to understand. I don't know if the golf course goes by physical year. I assume it does. Um, yes. 
uh, you know, what is the the operating budget for the golf course, right? So there are lots of expenses between people and all that stuff. You know, we're not going to go change that. That's a it's a thing it is. Um, but what is the total amount the golf course takes in? Let's just say at the end of calendar year 22, how much revenue do you take in? And how much um, money went back into it? Was it was it equal? Like, do we do we take in more money and then that gets allocated to other places in the town? Like, how does that, it would be interesting to see that. I would like that fact for next time to understand the, the budget that sure. came out. Um, you know, the budget used for anything between projects to paying salaries to whatever. But what is the what is that? Can we get that as a stat next time? Sure. So FYE 23 is closed and I can um, produce a report that shows expenses and revenue and would show the net gain. Uh, that net goes into uh, fund balance and that will be used to pay for future projects, capital improvement projects, such as the fence. And is, that, and is that capital improvement projects for the golf course or anything in the town? Golf course only. Okay. All right. So that, that makes me feel good. That, that was my question. Thanks, Mark. Yep. I didn't realize that, Mark. I didn't realize that those those uh, funds just go to the golf course. That's That makes me feel a lot better. Yes. Yep. But I will make sure to have a report. Um, for the November meeting. Any other questions surrounding this topic? Not the golf course, but um, uh, citizen comments I wanted to share. The concept plan that Mark shared with us at the last commission meeting for the library field, for the pickleball courts and the uh, basketball court and the future home of the Groton Sale Monument has generated a lot of discussion at Thrive 55. Um, and Mark and I have had some correspondence about that. Um, and I am getting feedback from that community about, first of all, they support the entire concept. They're positive about that, but they have concerns about memorial trees that might be cut down or relocated. Um, parking is likely to be an issue and Mark said that the plan is going to um, planning, Mark, zoning and planning next week. Uh, so what, what will happen is it will first go for a staff review. Uh, and that uh, staff will have two to two and a half weeks to review the plans, uh, provide comments. Those comments will come back to myself and uh, Kenton Frost, who's working on the plan. Um, so it will give us a little bit of time to incorporate whatever recommendations they make, suggested changes, and then it will go to the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, which will be, I, I think the date is November 14th. Is that an open meeting, Mark? Yes, uh, all town meetings are open meetings. Okay. Thank you, because I told um, the folks who were talking to me about it um, that I would get back to them on when they could provide their input, comments, observations about the project. But again, I'd like to emphasize that overall, they're very supportive of the project. Thank you. Yep. Anything else around citizens, petitions, and comments? Town council referrals? None. Correspondence and communications. Um, commissioners, have, has anybody spoken to you about any subject? Mark, uh, I had one, uh, actually one person uh, say that it should be named Trident Park <laughs> when you talked about, about naming oh. the park. <laughs> okay. But, but that was just... I said, oh, you know what? That's pretty good, you know. But anyway, I Which I told part? my parents. the uh Mark mentioned uh naming the uh the rink, the pickleball courts, the soccer field, and coming up with something that uh aligned with the sale monument there, which was a terrific idea. And uh person came up with Trident Park. I also thought Mike had a great idea about opening up 
to a naming contest or whatever. But yeah, but uh, moving right along. My um, name for that park, Dom, is it new. Is my name for the park? Or suggestion is Newtown Park. It's on Newtown Road. No, oh, okay. And we have all those memorials there, not just the trees, yeah. but the um, veteran memorials. So two of them. Yeah. That well, should be rather interesting to see what what everyone comes up with. That's for sure. All right, uh, Mark, you're on again. Like you're never off. You're never off, but you're on again. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I am reporting in from Dallas, Texas. Um, <laughs> I, I have been here uh, all week at the annual NRPA conference. There is about 8,000 parks and recreational professionals that wow. have been going to educational sessions all week. Uh, it just ended this afternoon, and uh, I fly back home tomorrow. I leave at 7 a.m. Uh, so it's been a, it's been a great week. Um, I've gone to a lot of sessions. Um, learned um, all kinds of new and different things and been making lots of notes and, um, you know, now just need to find time to try to implement all of these <laughs> great ideas, which is usually the case, but um, yeah, it, it's been terrific. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, I do have uh, some updates in addition to what was provided in the printed report. Um, so at the public presentation of the recreation master plan, uh, Tom Olson, who is on the conservation commission, uh, spoke and identified, um, some concerns that he had or suggestions that he had for the report, uh, or for the recreation master plan. Uh, he pointed out a couple of things. Um, the, as you all remember, part of the report included a section that uh, provided a written description of the different parks that had been looked at. Uh, one of those was the Sassicus Nature Preserve. And Tom pointed out that the acreage identified in the Sassicus Nature Preserve was incorrect. Uh, that has been updated and corrected. Um, he also um, felt that the open space map that was in the plan uh, needed to was, there was a couple of parcels that had been incorrectly identified um, as a particular type or the manager or owner of that space. Um, that has all been collected, uh, corrected rather. We worked with uh, Noah, who was the GIS coordinator um, from uh, for the town, and he worked with Barry Dunn. And, and Noah actually recreated the map, and it's it, it's easier to read. Uh, so that also has been done. Uh, the other concern that Tom had was there was some narrative about the um, it. Tom didn't feel that it was clear the um, what had been the survey area. So there was a, a map of Groton and it wasn't clear, the narrative wasn't clear that the what was pictured in the map didn't accurately describe what who was able to do the survey and what part of the town was um, or those properties that were analyzed. So we went back and, and made some ch changes to that map also. So the three things that Tom identified have all been updated in the new version. Um, they sent that to me yesterday. I haven't been able to get my laptop to work while I've been here. So I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to send you an updated copy of the plan. When I get back, um, on Monday, I will send you the updated copy of the plan so you can see those changes that, that were made. Uh, but I just wanted to update everybody that the changes that Tom had suggested we make were all done. Uh, I also uh, 
prior to sending out the agenda, um, I sent a draft copy to Dom and asked if there's any additional information um, that he would like to see on the agenda. A lot of times what I'd like to do is incorporate that just into the, the director's report. And um, so Dom had asked about um, the status of the pickleball project. And we, we've been working with Barry and Dunn. Um, we had to go back and talk to Musco about the lighting, the, the zoning in the area where the pickleball courts are, um, the maximum light, allowable light height is, it's either 20 or 30 feet. And Musco is proposing 50 foot high lights. So we had a discussion with Musco to try to find out if we could lower the poles that would require putting more poles in and that escalated the cost considerably. Uh, so we're anticipating that the poles are gonna have to have red flashers on them and to as a warning to planes coming in. And it's also gonna require a generator in case the power goes down, the generator will continue to flash those red lights. So we're working through these kinds of um, issues that are involved with planning a park. Um, at, but we're hopeful to, in the next few weeks, uh, submit that plan for staff review also. So I, I don't have a clear timeline where, like I said, we're trying to work through some of these uh, final um, issues that need to be addressed before we can uh, submit the plan. Um, the lights for Pequannock Plains Park have arrived. This was another question that Tom had had, uh, was the lights at Pequannock Plain Park. So the lights have arrived, the poles have not arrived. So the lights are sitting in the park's maintenance building. And once the poles arrive, uh, Public Works has committed to installing the, the poles and the lights. Um, the poles are due sometime in November. Um, if we have a winter like we did last year, we should be able to put the poles in over the winter. If we have a cold, snowy winter and the frost sets into the ground, that's gonna delay the installation of the poles and the lights. Um, and then the last question that Dom had uh, was the check-in process at the community center. Um, and I think this is kind of specific to uh, pickleball and, and perhaps dodgeball, uh, we are moving towards an automated system. Um, we eventually hope to get to the place where we're actually not handling cash um, and that it will all be done on kind of a debit card. So someone would be able to purchase, say, 10, um, 10 rounds. Rounds isn't a good word. Um, 10 playing times of pickleball and we'll have that on a card and they'll swipe or tap their card and it will automatically deduct um, the cost of the open play from the card. Um, we've had a bit of an issue with finance and the software company um, and we're trying to work that out. Finance isn't real happy with how the software reports uh, credits and so we're trying to work that out before we implement that system. Uh, so that, I don't have a timeline for that, but we're working on getting that resolved. And that's all that I had for the director's report. Thank you, Mark. So uh, yeah. Mark, I gather that the, pole, that the light poles for Pequannock Plains Park are considerably shorter. Yes, they're 12 to 15 feet. Right, right. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. And those are all solar powered. Yeah. I, I was just, I was wondering about the concern from all the, the residents. There are more residential folks over adjacent to the park. Has that created a problem? No. Obviously not. not. Not yet. Uh, we've gone okay. through the permitting process. You, you know, the light that is going to radiate from these poles is really minimal. 
Um, and so I, and part of the, as we were going through the permitting process, one of the items that we had to submit to the planning and zoning was a, um, uh, shoot, now it's, it's a report that shows the amount of light that is broadcasted away from the pole. Um, and it was at zero along, all along the property line. So in other words, there isn't going to be any spillage from these lights uh, going into the abutters property. The, the, mm -hmm. the design of the lights, the light goes straight down there's no light that's kind of broadcasted up or out. It, it goes directly down. Okay. And with the, uh, um, with the pickleball courts, the initial lighting system was going around the rink for the hockey, right? Yes. There, there's so this, be is just, this is just inclusive. Their grant was for lights, I believe. Yes, um, okay. there's going to be three 50 foot poles, and from those poles, lights will be pointing both at the hockey rink and at the pickleball courts. Okay. So, those three poles will provide light for both facilities. Okay, so between the two grants, will there be monies for that generator, et cetera? Um, I haven't seen the final numbers yet. Okay. Uh, we curious. were, yeah, we were looking at um, putting in a, re replacing the shed that is there now next to the hockey <laughs> rink because they're yeah, yeah. gym packed full. Um, so we were looking at putting in like a two car garage. Um, I, I went on a tour Monday of four different recreation facilities. And one of the things that I saw was um, they had taken an old Connex box, which is kind of what they drop onto, you know, utility or, or drop onto um, trailers. And they had uh, fixed it up and done a really nice job. Um, and that they were using for storage for an outside exercise area. And so I took a couple of photos and shared the idea with the, with the architect to look at an opportunity to maybe shave some money for the storage area, which would give us money for the generator and oh, wow. the lights on top. So yeah, we're, uh, the term they like to use is value engineering. Uh, it's a fancy way for saying we're, we're, uh, you know, re-engineering and look at lowering the cost so we can um, absorb a cost that we hadn't anticipated, which was the um, having to put in a generator to make sure that those red flashing lights, again, stay on all the time in the event of a loss of power. Thank you. That makes sense. Thank you, Mark. Any yep. other questions surrounding these well, topics? Yeah, Mark. So um, just suggestion, like, obviously, you got to have the lights on because the airports and everything. But uh, maybe uh, there's a solar option, a solar and battery option that's cheaper than generator. Just uh, no idea what's out there. But, you know, it, it's it's only got to last a certain number of hours. Right. And it's not on all the time. So it maybe, maybe not um, food for thought, depending on the cost for you. The, the architects right. probably can tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we're on the director's report, I got a couple questions. Um, okay. Mark, there was there was an item in there talking about you guys are getting ready for the CIP projects the next year. Do we vote yeah. on them um, in in a future meeting? I okay. will share those with you uh, at the November meeting. I haven't okay. um, I haven't uh, completed those. I actually haven't started them. Uh, I got the email well maybe a week before I left and. Um, they're due October 20th, but that's kind of a soft due date. Uh, generally, they don't get turned in until sometime in December. Because uh, a lot of times we're waiting for quotes to come back uh, associated with a, with a particular project. So, uh, but I will have, for the November meeting, I will have a, a pretty firm 
grasp on proposed projects for next fiscal year. So I will share that with the commission. Okay, thanks. Um, and then I saw an article, it wasn't in any direction for it, but it was talking about the Spicer Boathouse, which I think is the one by where you where you work over there. And it yes. looked like there was an article, like there was a bunch of funding that came through. I don't know if it was in the town, the state, I'm, I'm not sure, but there was a funding stream and I wish I saved the article um, saying that they were going to use it to, I guess, replace it or, or redo it. Or there was some something something with, with fixing it up. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this. And then the second thing is like, who uses it? Like, is it is it used for Parks and Rec or is it like a personal one? Um, uh, looking for some more info. Sure. So we, the state received uh, $60,000 to make, to fix the roof on the, um, on the, on the barn that is down at Spicer Park. Now that barn holds rowing shells, canoes, kayaks, uh, paddles, ergs that are used by the high school rowing team and also life jackets. So the, the roof leaks and the town has patched it a number of times and that money is to replace, to put a new roof on that building. And so that gets used by members of the community boating club, uh, folks that have paid to have a, uh, a rack there for their personal canoe or kayak. And it's also used by the, the high school uh, rowing team. Okay, thanks. I was, I was wondering who used it. I'm glad that the community, it seems like at large and a lot of different groups use it. So uh, good, good use of money. Thank you. And that money came from uh, the bond fund. So we had submitted in partnership with the No Inc. Rowing Club, we had submitted uh, a request for bond money from the state. But is that free money or is that like money we have to pay back to the state then? Uh, no, we do not have to pay that back. Um, okay, thanks. I, yeah, I, mean, I hear bond, I think payback, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think my understanding is the state issues these bonds. Um, so, and you know, people purchase those bonds and, and um, but yeah, the town does not have to pay that money back. Okay, thanks. I'm almost at thanks. Anything else surrounding this topic? Then moving along to golf course, unless we want to move ahead. I mean, I think we beat that thing to dead, but uh, I do have one follow up issue on Mark. Okay. Will you get the financial statements for the next meeting. Do you think you can get? the income statement by month yes because kind of to dom's issues i think we'll find from january to april we'll find there's a big deficit in the fund because yeah there's hardly anybody playing um and uh, all the expenses all the employees are there uh still charging the revenue account right so I think that that might be part of the issue, Dom, is it, where's the money is mm -hmm. in those four months, there's not much coming in. Mostly, mostly um, members play in the winter. Very few, I think, the public, and we'll find that there's a lot of money chewed up in those winter months. I'm not sure what the employees are doing in those those four months, but I'm sure it's nothing like the summer and fall and spring. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, and I did, uh, Jim, at the last meeting had asked about the aeration of the greens. And I, I did ask Eric, and he said that they are not, they did not core aerate this year. There's actually a couple of ways to um, aerate the the greens. Uh, they did aerate in the, in the spring, and they did tine aerating, which is, they have a machine that that punches a long thin there's a long thin rod that punches a hole down into into the green uh and that's what eric did in the spring and also did this fall um he did not core aerate which uh, the core aerator puts 
puts a tine in that has a hole in it and it actually pulls a plug out of the grass and then yeah. they top dress it with sand. Um, Eric, due to all the rain that we've had, Eric did not um, feel comfortable core aerating and he was also facing a, a, a timeline challenge. There was a PGA event coming up and he didn't he didn't feel comfortable that the the greens would have healed from the core aeration well enough prior to the start of this PGA event. So he opted not to do the core aerating this uh, this fall. So what does he think the implication of that is? Oh, I, I don't I don't think that Eric is concerned that it's going to have a significant impact on the conditions of the green. I, I'm sure that if he felt that it was going to jeopardize the the quality of the greens, um, he would have um, made another choice. Hmm. I mean, Eric realizes that the, the greens uh, are, you know, probably one of the most important parts of the golf course. And he did, he did um, aerate 17 and 18 or 16 and 17 fairways. I, I was Corey. playing so him, yeah. Okay. Oh, the yeah. fairways. Yeah. Yes, the fairways. Yeah. Yeah, I think your your question last month had to do with the greens and. Um, yeah, I brought up the 16th and 17th fairways too. They were in terrible shape. Right. Yeah, and he so has talked. Yeah. He has talked to me about that, and and he um, has explained that when that was all, when that was all, that was all part of the Pfizer project, and they there is no. There's no good soil there is, is the problem. And that's why um, it has, it, even with irrigation, it, there's no good soil there. So, um, you know, that's, that's why it, it looks the way it does. Well, you know, Mark, that happened 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've yep. we've lived with that for twenty five years with not enough topsoil. You know, maybe there should be a plan. Yeah, it's just it's just bad for a course that charges seventy dollars with cart. You know, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it almost seems Mark a lot of. A lot of opportunity at the golf course. A lot of like different things I'm hearing from projects. Like, it may like does the does the golf course have a list of like if they were king for a day and you know money was um, flowing like you know no tomorrow, do they have a list of one to X of like all their projects they would love to go do? Oh yeah, that's all part of the CIP. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, they we, have a whole list, and you're taking. Oh yeah, there's there's a whole list that uh, we had a consulting group come in a number of years ago and pretty much said look you need to replace you need to refurbish every single uh, bunker in on the course and you know this past year they did 17 new bunkers uh, they have a plan to do more uh, we also need to replace the irrigation system and that alone is I think right now the the current estimate is 1.8 million. So they have, you know, in excess of probably five or six million dollars worth of money or projects that have been identified. But Mark, it can be triaged. I mean, just because they're they're big doesn't mean they they can't be done. And on the irrigation, it, it's not like the whole course is dry. There are certain areas that need more irrigation. But to say that we have to redo the whole course is really not a practical solution. If we would have had the irrigation two summers ago on 16 and 17 fairways, we wouldn't have the problem because three years ago, those fairways were fine, even though Eric thinks there's not enough topsoil. 
Okay. I think the irrigation was the issue summer before this past summer because it was so dry. Right. But a lot of the course was just fine. Right. I don't think we need an entirely new irrigation system. Well, I think Eric would disagree. Uh, he's there every day and, and is aware of all of the issues that they have with the irrigation system. Um, it, you know, this is this is a link style course, so it's much more open. Uh, most of the courses in the area have kind of narrower fairways, and it's much easier to irrigate all of those. Uh, you know, the link style courses are, are much broader and um, traditionally aren't totally irrigated. So when I say replacing the irrigation system, I'm talking about the existing piping that is 25 plus years old and the joints are constantly breaking and there's holes due to, um, you know, just movement stones moving and, and puncture putting holes in, in, the, in the piping system. So that's, yeah, I was, the intent is not to irrigate the entire course, but to replace the existing irrigation um, so that it's, we're not having to deal with so many uh, problems. And that would be over time, I imagine, not all at once, I think, is what Jim is, is saying. Yeah, that, right. Yeah, I, I, I don't, well, we don't have $1.8 million in fund balance. There you go. So yeah, it would be a, a phase project, but there's also a lot more bunkers to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Mark, how much do we spend every year? Like, you know, you, you, do, you do projects, you're trying to do your best to get as many you can in a year. Do we spend 100K a year in projects, 200K? What's the average? You know, obviously it's about $5 million of total expenditures you need. What, what's the average we spent on, on projects in the golf course in a year? Then does it, maybe if it's too variable, that's fine. Just let me know. Yeah, it is, it is quite variable. Um, you know, this past year, I think the work on the 17 bunkers was $250,000. And I think budgeted for FYE 24, is another 130, I think. So it, it, it varies. Okay, any other questions or comments regarding the golf course? Moving right along to trails and the uh, coordinating task force. Mark, anything about the trails? Uh, yeah, just to update everybody, we did go out to bid for a street tree, uh, updating our, our, I'm sorry, not street trees, uh, updating our bike and pedestrian master plan. We did only receive one bid. Um, and so we are, we have re-scoped the, 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 we've changed the scope of work and we are um, have rebid that project, hoping to get more, expecting to get more bids, um, which will make it a more competitive process, and we feel like we'll get a, a better result. Great. I, I, I'm curious about the. Uh, uh, there was going to be a uh, a program at the cop property. I believe it was last weekend, and of course yes. it rained. It rained. Yeah. And naturally, and, then, and naturally, it had to be rescheduled. But why was it rescheduled to March? Uh, that, I, that I could not understand. It was the original date of rescheduling was uh, for this coming Saturday. When we oh. looked at the when we looked at the extended forecast, it called yeah. for rain again. Yeah. So um, the decision was made to push it off into March. We've had some wet weather, haven't we? <laughs> uh, the weather has not been our friend this year. <laughs> it hasn't. Anything, anything, comments, concerns regarding trails? 
Okay, athletic fields. Uh, we received a few bids for design of the athletic fields at uh, Clodchester property, um, the redesign of the fields at Sutton Park, and also uh, the design of some new fields up at the high school. Uh, the athletic fields task force a group of those members are going to be reviewing and the proposals and interviewing the candidates and then we'll make a selection and that project will begin coming up with the design plans for the fields for those three areas. So that's moving along. So that includes fields, irrigation, bleachers, whatever, all that, all that types of yes, whatever. Yes, yes, exactly. Yep, in those in those three areas, Clodchester, Sutton Park, and up at the high school. And uh, I guess this is a silly question. With, with that, would the golf course be included in that those projects? No, they're only looking at those three areas. This is specific okay. to athletic fields, not not the not the golf course. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? I just wanted to compliment uh, the department on the beautiful field at the community center. That is a beauty. Yes, compared to what it was uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, yes, uh, and it does have irrigation and, and, you know, one of the, in addition to all these educational sessions, they have, um, they bring in probably three or 400 vendors and there's an exhibit hall. Uh, and one of the things that I looked at was um, some technology that would allow us to better control uh, the application of water on the field. Uh, and it would actually help us save water because right now we don't have a control system other than to say uh, irrigation come on at four in the morning run for 15 minutes in zone one run for 15 minutes in zone two this new system will um, look at the amount of rainfall uh, look at evapotranspiration which is the loss of water from the ground and then um, make an assessment as to whether the irrigation should come on or off. And so it potentially could save, um, depending on the number of fields, like at Poquantic Plains Park, it, it could end up saving um, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water annually. Okay. So yeah, so those are the kinds of things that I've been doing this week is uh, learning more and, and then, um, just gaining more knowledge um, about what resources are out there that could be applied to to the parks to parks and recreation. And Mark, I assume those can be refitted. Like you know, like if you wanted to do that on the fields that were already made, it's just a it's just a replacing the control system and adding a couple of sensors. It wouldn't be re re ripping up the whole system. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, that was one of the questions that I asked them. And so my I plan to reach out to our uh, sustainability and resiliency manager to see if there are grant opportunities that could potentially pay for this. Um, they are, I have asked Public Works to give us, to provide me the numbers, the number of gallons that we uh, put on the fields annually. And the company said that they would generate kind of a return on investment uh, so that we could see how soon, uh, assuming, um, you know, a, a typical summer, although I don't know what that is anymore. It's it's either six weeks of no rain or rain every four days, but they, they would run a, a, an analysis to see what a, a what we should expect for a payback. Mark, along along with that with Elizabeth, I agree about the positiveness of that field a lot at the GCC. But one of the best things you did was put that temporary fence around to keep people oh, off, yeah. to keep people off it. I'm telling you that that gave you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, 
money back, payback, that's for sure. So Yeah, well, it allowed us to protect the investment because if we hadn't put that up, you know, people would have been out using the fields and it just, um, it, it takes about a year for the grassroots to really um, set themselves. And if we had just left that open, you know, the roots wouldn't have time to establish themselves and it, and it would have been a mess. Yep. So anyway. along the line, Mark, I think that was a good idea, right? Like, you know, you kind of said, hey, this is the right way to do things. Let's not half ass it, so to speak. Let's, let's, let's do it right. Let's leave it for a year. You know, there's a lot of fields yeah. that are going to go out to bid or there's a lot of design contract. I assume that when, you know, sometime down the road, you wouldn't redo them all at the same time and you might do the phased approach where um, you might take that field offline for a year if it's a grass field and um, let that grass mature. Is that a good statement or has that been something on your mind? Yeah, we're going to have to, um, well, new fields, um, yeah, we'll, new fields, we would use the same approach. We would protect them with temporary fencing until they've had a time to establish, um, you know, renovating existing fields. It, we're going to have to figure out a system where we don't put ourselves so short of fields while the new fields are coming in. So, um yeah, so that is going to be a challenge. Anything else about fields? Any questions or concerns? Agency accreditation. Yeah, I um, have not had a chance to work on that, uh, but that is a goal for the new fiscal or for the new calendar year is to, uh, once I'm through the budget, both the CIP and the operating that. Um, I'm going to hit that full force. Okay. Uh, any unfinished business? New business? The uh, a commissioner appointment to the Golf Advisory Board? Yes. Yeah, so there is um, the Golf Advisory Board. There is a position designated for um, a set aside for uh, someone from the Parks and Recreation Commission. We have not had representation from the commission on the Golf Advisory Board. So I just wanted to throw that out to see if anybody was uh, interested in, in stepping up to be on the Golf Advisory Board. It does not meet monthly. We meet, I think about seven times a month, uh, seven times a month, seven times a year. Um, and the meetings are Monday, generally the first Monday of the month. And they start at seven o'clock and they are virtual. Is anybody interested in doing that? I know Mark had asked me if I could do it and, uh, over a year ago, and I just really don't have the time to do that. Uh, is anybody interested in representing us there? Mark, do we have? Does it have to be the same person? Uh, it doesn't, but I think it would really help uh, having people rotating in. Uh, it would just be kind of inconsistent and kind of staying abreast of everything that's going on, um, and just having the historical understanding of the golf advisory board. I, I think it would be best served if one person did it. Okay, thanks. I, I don't want to volunteer just yet with, with my two little ones. So, uh, but if it was if it made sense, we could rotate it. I would be in a in a rotation mix. But so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna abstain for the current moment. Okay, uh, Mark. If 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 uh, there is consideration of sharing that um, I, I would consider doing it in a share position, but uh, I'm not sure I would be able to do all of them. Okay, I will uh, I'll bring it up to the Golf Advisory Board and, and they could very well disagree with me and, and think that, um, you know, that works. Okay. Yeah, so that I'm, I'm Tag team with you if that's if that comes to fruition. Yeah, that'd be good. 
now would you see this as like every uh, every I other do. meeting or yes just okay or i didn't know if it would be like you know one would do it for three of the meetings and then the other person would do it for the next four and then it would go back but so you're thinking it would be kind of one meeting by one person one meeting uh, the following meeting by the different person and then kind of alternating back and forth that way that was the first thought until you just said that so <laughs> i i'd be up for anything like that so mike okay. if you're considering it if you uh want to do like three in a row or two in a row or every other uh, <laughs> but let's think yeah. about it and uh maybe just uh finalize it at the next meeting yeah i'm open i guess if there's a there's a suggestion from the golf board that would make um they would recommend them um, you know i'm open for suggestions um no not sounds partially good. <laughs> sounds good mark okay mm -mm. any other new business uh we have the uh, uh recreation master plan um and the letter which be honest with you, Elizabeth, I have done nothing with. Um, I don't know where you're at with that. That was what I had to offer to the commission for review. Okay. So I, okay. I haven't done anything else with it. Okay. Um, just to give the commission an update, uh, we are going back to the council on October 24th. So that would be a week from this coming Tuesday, um, asking that the council adopt the Parks and Recreation Master Plan that was presented to them back, uh, I don't even remember the date, um, a couple of meetings ago now. Um, I was hopeful that the commission would be able to put together a letter that could be sent to the council prior to uh, the council's consideration of adopting the plan. Okay. So you're looking for a letter in support of the plan? Yes. The master plan, okay. Yes. All righty. Elizabeth, if I put something together um, uh, very quickly uh, and send it to you, could you review it and add to it and edit it and do all those good things? Well, I was thinking, Dom, with the draft that I already did, it would okay. be helpful if you could comment on that and insert points that you wanted to make. Okay. All right. And for that matter, any other member of the commission. Yeah. And this would be, we would need this no later than next Thursday because the packets go out to the council the th either the Thursday or the Friday. Most times they're assembled on Thursday and then they go out to the, to the council on Friday prior to the following Tuesday meeting. Is this the letter that Mark you included in the in the email this week? Yes, it was part of the. I believe it was part of the packet that I sent out. It was. Okay. Yeah, I okay. read the letter. I liked it. I thought you did a good job, Elizabeth. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, I don't think I had any comment. I think for the only suggestion I'd have is that if we do it, kind of make it um somewhat official, meaning like put a little Groton maybe um, logo on the top or something or letterhead, you know, um, header up top. And then if you want us all to, I don't know if the plan was to try to have us all sign it or something, but um, I, I didn't know what the game plan was. Yeah, I mean, we could certainly put it on department letterhead um, and have it be from the from the commission um as as far as getting everybody's signature um i think the only way to do that would be actually in person um i don't know if everybody has the capable of doing an e-signature 
uh, on this document. But we could have it available at Spicer House for folks to stop by and sign. Whatever you, the commission wants, I'll support. Well, if we have a vote at tonight's meeting to approve this letter for submission to the town council, um, I think Dom could sign it as chairman um, and would be on record in the minutes as having all approved it, if that's the case. I agree. I don't think it needs each of our individual signatures. I think that if, as Elizabeth said, we noted in the meeting that it has our backing and the um, the vote count, I think that'll do along with one signature from Dom, maybe. Yep. That'd be fine. I'd be happy to sign it. All right. Is so, a, is there a motion to approve the the letter? Sure, I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. Okay, and uh, uh, so approved. Uh, any uh, anybody abstaining against it? All voting. Let's vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sounds like it's unanimous. Um, Mark, I am going away on Tuesday. So between tomorrow and Monday, I would need to have, I would go down uh, either to the Spicer House or wherever you want me to go to sign it and that would be fine. Okay, well, uh, I'm traveling most of the day tomorrow. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and without, yeah, I wouldn't be able to put it on letterhead until um, until Monday. Okay. So uh, I will do that first thing Monday morning. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, our next meeting is November 9th. Uh, is there anything uh, else for the good of the order? Uh, Don, just to point out that it is at the Mystic River Magnet School. Oh, that's right. That's a, in person, right? An in person, mm -hmm. yes. In person. Look out. Yeah. Sounds good. Mark, where are you located right now? Where, where? Um, what, what is the place? I'm sitting in the business section of the uh, hotel in in Dallas. Okay, is that the Bubble Hotel? Is that the uh, one? That bubble? No, 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 no. This is okay. a much older building. Okay. Um, but but it, it's close to the convention center. Oh, nice. Which is where the uh, conference was held. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Then I'll see you Monday. And everyone yeah. will see you all in person uh, on November 9th. Thank yes. you very much. All right. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, all right. Stop. Mark, any update on the park by me? Like the one that the little one that's going in. I, I know I saw a bunch of wood chips there and like they started doing something, but it hasn't really been any any motion. Any any word from the contractor building it? The one on uh I don't know the road, Imogen, I think, or something over there. Yeah, no, I've heard nothing um about that. Okay. Just wondering if you had an update. They, sure. they like they put some wood chips in and some logs, but like there's been no I was trying to visualize where it would go. And like yeah. I don't know, I couldn't visualize it based, but maybe they only did like the path to get there and not the rest. Who knows? So Yeah. No, he he doesn't you know, contact me with updates. So I have no idea what his schedule is. Yeah, no, I was just asking. I'm actually gonna call the, the planning commission because I talked to them just because of the whole air disaster a long time ago. And uh oh. they had said that they weren't gonna issue the last two building permits until 
everything went in and they're building oh, one of those right. houses right now and it's halfway oh. up and not everything is in. So I'm going to call the planning commission tomorrow and ask oh. like what, okay. what, what, I mean, yeah, how that happened. Aspect, how that happened right. or like, was there some percentage that he did more and they agreed to give him one of the permits? I don't know. Maybe, but who knows? So, right. Right. Okay. Just wondering. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Have a good Bye. night. Bye. Thanks.